everyone. My name is Robert. My name is Fatima. And this is the Southwest Gospel Podcast. So today we're going to be talking about what is faithfulness to God. And the very first question we have is what is the biblical definition of faithfulness? Um, you know, I think if you look at the Bible, um, even from the Old Testament to the New Testament, faithfulness always has to do with people believing what God said about who he is first, about who God is first. And then people believing what God has commanded to do. Right. And then, so you believe the, the person of God, and then you believe what God has told you to do. Mm-hmm. And then faithfulness also has to do with um, walking in those things that right. God has said about himself. And so it's kind of overarching, like believing his person, believing the things he asks us to do, and then um, following through with those things. So I actually have a question about that. First, so there was three different categories that we just hit. Mm -hmm. The very first one is that who is the person of God? And for listeners that do not know, what is the person of God? Mm -hmm. So God uh, has been revealing himself throughout history. Um, If you look at the Old Testament, he has revealed himself as Yahweh. Uh, He said in Exodus uh, that I am who I am. So that means God is um, self-existent. He doesn't rely on anything else. And so as you read through the whole Bible, God is revealing more and more about who he is, his character, his love, his holiness. Um, And that from that character, God reveals to us what he expects from us rooted in his person. Right. And I feel like the I am that I am has such a deep meaning to it, like you were mentioning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And something that's actually happening in today, you probably heard a lot about affirmations that people are putting I am Mm -hmm. and then they put something that they want to believe about themselves. So um, we need something else to describe us. I am a friend. I am a brother. So we need other things to relate to, but God is the only being that is self-defined, self He's, he's the only one that says, I am that I am. He doesn't need anything else to define himself. Our value is derived from him. It says that we are made in his image. Mm-hmm. And so we need him to de- derive our value from him. God derives his own value from himself. He doesn't need anything else outside of himself mm-hmm. um, to derive value or worth. Right. He is worthy in himself. Right. And I think that actually leads us into the um, second question that I have for you. Mm-hmm. It's first you mentioned that it's the person of God, and then second is believing what he says about us. Mm-hmm. So what would those things be? Like, who are we to God? And- mm-hmm. The very first thing that God says about humanity is that we are created in his image. That means um, the way that he is perfect, um, the way that he is holy, the way that he is um, relatable, We are the same things. The story of the Bible says that instead of looking to God for our value, we turn to ourselves and we look at ourselves for our value. So that's where the disconnect happens. We have to put our faith in God, not in ourselves. Um, And the story of the Bible, if if you guys know, um, God actually sent his son, Jesus Christ, um, because Even though we are created in God's image and we're supposed to depend on Him, um, we turn back from Him and we keep depending on ourselves. And so we've broken that relationship. We've actually sinned against God. And what Jesus has done is He has come into into our world. Um, He lived a perfect life where He is dependent on God the Father. So that when He died on the cross, um, he died in our place. He died for the punishment that is due us depending on ourselves and sinning against God and turning against God. And so when we put our faith in Jesus, now we can return back to God. Now we can uh, depend on Him again. Now we can find our identity in Him again. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think there's so much peace that comes in that. Mm-hmm. Because so often we want to be able to control everything and be able to put everything into our hands. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just such an exhausting thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think there's a lot of peace in just being able to give everything back to God and mm-hmm. fully placing our identity in who He says we are. And that's something that's very valuable mm-hmm. because God created us, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Yeah. Now you understand who God is, what he says about you, and they say, 
um, a love and a trust that comes with that. Mm-hmm. So loving God, you want to be obedient. Mm-hmm. You want to follow his rules because you know that everything that he has set in place is for your own good. Mm-hmm. And I just really love that. But what else could you add to that? Like, mm-hmm. Why would people want to be obedient in the mm-hmm. components? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was actually just reading about that recently. Um, how it says in Romans that the Holy Spirit is life because of righteousness. So if we think about that, um, life can derive from what is true or life or not. Um, what, we, what we perceive as life can derive from what is not true, from what is not righteousness. And so when God gives us these commands, he's basically saying, this is the way to live. Mm-hmm. If you really want to be joyful, if you really want to live life to the fullest, right. um, I'm giving you basically the roadmap of how to live. And that is in obedience to me, that is independence to, in dependence to me, in faith of what I said, uh, who I am, who you are, and how to live. Right. Um, and basically God is saying, this is not the Bible. All the commands here are um, for our good for our good so that we can live life to the fullest but also for his glory because if we believe him right. kind of like you know what we said in the beginning if we believe him for um, for what he says is true then we're saying he is trustworthy then we're saying that mm-hmm. what he says uh is true then it's there's there's two things happening we yeah. are gaining life for our own soul but we're also glorifying the god that made us the god um, that we're dependent on. Right. And mm-hmm. I love that because it's a two-way street like you were mentioning. Mm-hmm. And that just shows how um, Yahweh, God, is a relationship. You get to have a personal relationship with God. And I think that's what makes the Christian faith so beautiful and amazing. Mm-hmm. That it's not just a one-way street. We're not just asking. Mm-hmm. We're also glorifying God in everything that we do by being obedient. And I really love that. Mm-hmm. I love that you were able to mention that that's the way that we glorify God is mm-hmm. by um, listening and trusting Him. Yeah. yeah, it is a relationship. And you put your faith in, in anything you put your faith, actually. There's a relationship there. Yeah. But the difference is with anything else, it's a one-way street, kind of like you're saying. Mm-hmm. We think that it's a two-way street, but anything else you put your faith in, that thing that you're putting your faith in, it's always taking from you. Right. It never gives life, but it can't give life. What would be an example of that? For, for example, career. Um, um, if right. you want to put your faith in career, it's always going to take but never give. If you put your faith in relationships for sex mm-hmm. or other people, mm-hmm. uh, you, you pour and you pour and you pour. And you might get stuff here and there, but it's never really fulfilling life. It's never really everlasting life. Right. Um, and it's short-term pleasure that people find. Yeah. It's an empty well. Yeah. Sure. Um, it always drains our soul. It, it always leads to death. Yeah. Um, only faith in God leads to life. Yeah. And it goes back to that where it just leaves you exhausted. Mm-hmm. So if you're able to fully trust and depend on God, and you're, like you're mentioning, it gives you new life. Mm-hmm. So how about you, uh, the next question I have for you, it's how is faithfulness the same, but also how has it been transformed from the Old Testament to the New Testament? For example, we know that in the Old Testament, mm-hmm. God is unchanging throughout the whole entire Bible, which is an amazing thing. Mm-hmm. But this is the person of God. Mm-hmm. So we get to see how he was in the Old Testament and then also how he is in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. Um, so what are some ways that we see faithfulness being displayed throughout Scripture? Mm-hmm. And then how does it look different from the Old Testament to the New Testament? Yeah, so in the Old Testament, God has been revealing himself throughout the centuries. Mm -hmm. His main role in the Old Testament is to show us through the nation of Israel, through the nation of the Jews, Mm -hmm. that um, one, there is a God. Mm -hmm. uh, And two, we have not been putting our faith in him. So all throughout the Old Testament, God is saying, this is the story. Um, And because you're not putting your faith in the one true God, there has to be a sacrifice 
that needs to be ha- that needs to happen so that you can come back to this God. I feel like we still see a lot of those things mm-hmm. happening today, mm-hmm. where people want to worship a different idol mm-hmm. because it's something that it's. I think it makes people feel like they can be in power and in control, mm-hmm. but it's something that isn't being really empty. And throughout the Old Testament, we see so many different examples mm-hmm. of people falling into worshiping the false idols. Mm-hmm. Kind of like in the when they were in the desert for forty years, mm-hmm. the Old Testament, and mm-hmm. then in the end, God was faithful throughout that entire time. Mm-hmm. And then in the end, they lost patience mm-hmm. and built an old idol for themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like I said, it goes back to where we're putting our faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, all throughout the history, all th- all throughout ancient civilization, and even today, um, we keep putting our faith in other things other than God. Back then, it might be like an actual statue, an actual idol, but we still have idols today. Um, whether it's fame, whether it's money, whether it's ourselves, whether it's other people, what people think about us, um, how we dress, um, how many followers we have. All these things, anything that we put our faith that is not God is an idol. Right. Mm-hmm. I actually really like that you brought up um, what people think about us and how people perceive us. Because mm-hmm. I think that goes into um, how Jesus came to transform everything. Mm-hmm. That he was a servant. He was born in a stable. Mm-hmm. And he humbled himself so dramatically. Mm-hmm. So it's awesome that you're able to just mention that, mm-hmm. that our faith can't be in the way people see us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even in that story, Jesus, um, you know, Jesus is God. He emptied himself. Uh, in Philippians, I believe it says, Jesus being in the form of God did not count at equality um, with God, but he emptied himself and took on the form of a servant. Um, and so what Jesus shows us is it's not what people think it's what God thinks that matters Mm, I love that so Jesus showed us what does it look like to really put your faith in God Um, Jesus did everything that we were not able to do and the reason he did that is so that he can have a perfect life so that he would be able to give his perfect life to us and that he would take on our imperfect life. Hmm. That is the the weight of his sacrifice on the cross. Right. When he died for our sins, that's what he's doing. He's taking on not only the punishment of God, but he's taking on our sins, our shortcomings, our um, unfaithfulness right. to God. And he's giving us his faithfulness. He's giving us uh, his perfect record. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's giving us the love of the Father that uh, we, we've we lost because right. we keep looking for love in other places. Yeah. And it's so cool to just know that uh, like God came to sacrifice himself mm-hmm. for us, mm-hmm. for you. And just he wanted, he loved you so much that God made that sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And that's something that has never been heard about Mm -hmm. until Jesus because he's a good God and that is the only God Mm -hmm. in all of existence like I said he is the only God that will give he's the only God that will go to us first even when we don't deserve it because we are the one who turned away from him Mm -hmm. and so we don't deserve him coming to us in the story of Jesus God in his love and his mercy he actually comes to get us when we don't deserve it. We actually deserve his wrath right. because we turned away from him. We sinned against him. Right. But instead of giving us wrath, he gives us mercy, right. which is undeserved um, kindness. Mm-hmm. Um, he's already done all the work for us to come back to him, to put our faith in him. That's why the gospel is such good news. Um, he comes... For sinners like us, he comes for people who have turned away from God, and he's he's bringing us back to to God. Right. Um, and that's such a and that is amazing grace. Yeah, I feel like that's actually answering the third question we had. Mm-hmm. It's what makes faithfulness to Yahweh so different than any other God, mm-hmm. and it's that it's a relationship that he's willing to make that sacrifice. He wants to be in the same place. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add? 
Yeah. Um, like I said, Yahweh is the only one that will come to us first. Mm-hmm. So our faith in God is basically a response to what He did first. Mm-hmm. We are not initiating going to Him. He came here to us. Right. And so faith in Yahweh, faith in Jesus, it's a response to what He has done for us. Yeah. It's not something that we have to muster up to get to Him. Mm-hmm. He already came to us. Um, he already showed us His love first. Right. Yeah, there's a scripture that it's in First John. I don't remember exactly what verse it is, but it says we love because he first loved us. Mm-hmm. Um, if you think about that, anything else in life, we have to take initiative, mm-hmm. which is a good thing. Right. Um, not saying initiative is a bad thing. Right. But in this case, God is the one who takes initiative. We are the recipient. We respond in faith. Um, our faith is not uh, the initiating factor. Our faith is what receives his first action. And praise God for that. Amen. I just want to say that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I have a question for you now. So we mentioned about the faithfulness of Yahweh, Mm -hmm. how it shows the persona of who he is Mm -hmm. and what he has done. Mm -hmm. And I think that leads up into who Jesus Christ Mm -hmm. is, that he has made a sacrifice. He became a servant. So that he can have a personal relationship with both you, me, and just all of his children. Mm-hmm. But one thing I also want to bring up to you is what is the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit? And how does that tie in everything together? Mm-hmm. But basically the Holy Spirit, he is Yahweh as well. Jesus gives us his spirit, right. which is the Holy Spirit. Right. When we depend on God, we have life. But when we depend on ourselves, we don't have life. Mm-hmm. So to put our faith in the Holy Spirit is to put our faith in what God has done through right. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He is the one that now allows us to, to believe in all things, to follow in all things, and to obey in all things. Right. That reminds me of the fruit of the Spirit. If you're filled by the Spirit of God, mm-hmm. like you were mentioning, it brings so much life into you. Mm-hmm. And that's when you start to develop um, true joy and peace self-control, patience, Mm -hmm. and all these wonderful, beautiful things. Mm -hmm. And also, I remember in the Old Testament, I think it's in Genesis 1, that it mentions that the Spirit of God was roaming. Mm -hmm. And it's just really cool to see how it's the Spirit that brings life. Yeah. So like you said, in the Old Old Testament, in Genesis, the Holy Spirit was present um, when we were first created, when before we turned away from God. Now that God has done a wonderful work of bringing us back to Him. Mm. He's giving us again His Holy Spirit. Oh, so now we can follow Him again the way yeah. He intended in the beginning. I guess it just shows that God restores everything. That mm-hmm. He wants to bring His children back to Him. Mm-hmm. He wants to bring you back to Him. And that actually, I feel like we've already mentioned this, but what is our role in faith with God? Mm-hmm. So now that God has done all the work, now is now that God has restored our relationship to Him uh, through Jesus Christ, and He's given us His Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ, our faithfulness to Him now looks like us continually choosing Him, mm-hmm. depending on Him, putting our faith in Him, and walking in obedience to the things He said about Himself, about us, and about how to live life. The fullest. So it's placing God at the center and placing Him first above everything else. Correct? Exactly. To look to Him for our life. Because He provides everything. Because He provides everything. Yeah. 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 And so the very last question that I have for you today mm-hmm. is, so one thing that I've seen in Scripture is, why does the Bible refer to idolatry as being unfaithful to God? Mm-hmm. Let's go to this passage in Romans. Um, Romans 3.23, it says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So what does that mean? So if you turn to Romans 1.23, it says, They exchange the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that 
uh, turning to idols is unfaithfulness to God is because we're basically exchanging the beauty of God mm -hmm. for something way, way, way less compared to Him. Right. It's like, and it could sometimes appear to be that is something that's good, mm -hmm. but then there's good and God is great. He God is, is better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know, love that. And I think just one thing is that how we mentioned that God is, the, Yahweh is having a true relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. You're having a relationship with God. And then if you choose to turn away from Him, you're basically choosing someone else over Him. Mm -hmm. And I think it's once you fully understand who God says He is and what He says about you, the value that He places into you and just how much He loves and cares for you, nothing else can compare. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just so amazing. And that's why I think it's so important to talk about the faithfulness of God, how He is faithful to us, but also what does being faithful to God look like and why is it important? Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing else that can truly bring you life like God can and mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. and I, I would really love for you guys to just think about that today. Where is your faith currently at? And I want to encourage you to really be honest with yourself so that you may be able to pray and find true faithfulness to God because experiencing that is one of the most wonderful and blessed things that you will ever experience. But I hope that you guys just really enjoyed this message. Again, I want to thank Robert for being a part of the Selfless Gospel. I'm so excited about just to see what God is going to be doing throughout this entire program. And again, this coming Tuesday, uh, we are going to be having a live online Bible study where we are going to talk about the faithfulness of God and just everything that we talked about today. So I'll see you guys there. Again, the Selfless Gospel. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.